Rub up your engines! Okay, change your pace. Here we have an Alfa Romeo V6 from the James Bond movie. There's the real one over here. Strangely enough, it's the same color. Okay, 1983, the James Bond movie Octopussy came out. This is an 83 Alfa Romeo that was used in the chase scene in the movie. I'll give you a little history of Alfa Romeos. The company's been around a long time. Basically, most of its history, it's been on the verge of bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> but Italians and an elite few drivers love them, so they keep bringing it back. They left the United States in 1995, but then they came back in 2007. Fiat, of course, owns them. They're Italian too. Now it's part of Stellantis. They don't sell that many cars in the United States. They averaged the last few years about 15, 16,000. This year so far, we're almost halfway there and they've sold like 2,300 of them so far. So they're not big sellers, but they're good lookers. Look, this thing is old as can be. It's still a sharp looking car. Now everybody who knows Alfa Romeo's know, yes, they always have problems. Now the first thing I notice when I open the door and pop the hood, I can smell gasoline. Ah, that's an Italian car for you. Now this particular one is a V6. Look, I guess they figure people are kind of dumb, so they put four, five, six. So you know which cylinder it is, right? It's blown many head gaskets until they finally figured out how to make a head gasket that works, and now it's not blowing them anymore. At least for the time being. If you can see, that's the Bosch fuel injection system. That's the airflow meter. It's not a modern one. It's hot wire. There's a little vein that opens and closes to tell how much air is coming in. But it's a pretty good fuel injection system. The Germans used them for years and years and years. It does have two electric cooling fans, which is a good idea because it's Italian and the electronics are somewhat weak. So you better have two of them to have a backup in case one of them breaks. Now back in the day, these new were between 14 and 15,000. Christ, the new Alphas 2022, they generally go between 40 and 70 thousand dollars up. Now, yeah, they're beautiful looking. One of them has a Ferrari engine. You better be prepared to maintain that and fork money all over the place. <laughs> You're going from Alfa Romeo on dependability to Ferrari on dependability. Speed and beauty, yes, but now he's got the head gasket sorted out, it's not blowing it. He only drives it a few hundred miles a year. It's his toy. And so he said that if you drove this thing every day, you better have a big wad of hundreds in your pocket to pay for the repairs that you'd need. They are fun to drive, there's no arguing that. If you're ever thinking about buying one, you gotta do what he did. It may be in the ocean state now, but it came from Golden, Colorado, and it came from the desert area. So there's no rust on this thing. Do not buy one of these from up north or from a coast where it was on the ocean because this thin Italian steel will be rusted away. I had a customer, he went to Florida and bought one of these and he paid 15 grand. Well, that was a lot of money in the early 80s. He says, oh, can you jack it up for me? Well, I got my jack out. I went to jack it up. I tried jacking it up anywhere I jacked. The steel just crunched up. The thing was completely rotten away. I told him, man, you got ripped off. But it didn't affect him personally all that much because sadly, he died of AIDS about six months months later. So the car was still there. It hadn't completely fallen apart. He was driving it around, but the next person that got that Alpha, boy, if they paid anything for it, they paid too much. Now, as you can see on this Alpha, look, it's solid as can be because it came from Colorado. <laughs> And it, it wasn't on the seashore of Florida like that customer of mine was. Of course, it's a sports car, so don't expect big people to sit in the back seat. You got about this much room, so it's basically made for two people. And it has seats in the back. You know, it's the dated dash from the 80s. They were all looking like that. But they do have quite a few toggles. They have to have exhaust temp because this is a catalytic converter one. One of the early catalytic converters and they had a tendency of overheating. But it is a five-speed standard transmission. And the seats, they're still in pretty good shape. Clock! My God, is it loud. Listen to it. Strangely enough, it's telling the right time. It's just noisy. I guess it's an Italian clock. It's got to speak up, you know? <laughs> now let's hope the emergency brake holds. We'll put it in neutral. All right, start her up. And it definitely sounds like an Alpha. It's got a nice loping idle. It's just getting ready to go. These are not made for idling, they're made for going. So let's take it for a spin. Now it is an Italian car, no hand cranks. Let's see if the electric window works. It still works, check it out. Hey, 
miracle of miracles. Now it's going up kind of slow, but it is going up. Now it does make a great sound when it's taken off. And we're on the bumpy part here. Strangely enough, it isn't riding all that bad because they're made to handle. And they don't ride that bad for a small wheelbase car. I gotta say, it's a fun car to drive around oh, on a geez. sunny day. And here we go. It does make a nice sound. There's no arguing that. It is fun to drive. The German Bosch fuel injection works quite well. Let me tell you, it's a step above the Weber carburation they used to put on these things. <laughs> now I gotta say, it's a fun car to drive. The weight distribution is almost 50-50. His previous one that he had when he was young and stupid instead of middle-aged, the older middle-aged, and a bit more intelligent, he put four snow tires on it. He'd go skiing. And since the weight and power distribution is so good on it, he could go up in the ski mountains with it. Even though you think, oh, hell, well, it's just rear-wheel drive. It's going to spin out. No, the weight distribution is correct. They designed these things for racing around. So really, most race cars fall apart too fast because they're driven too fast. He's not driving this too fast now, so it's not falling apart. And hey, with the price of the new Alphas, you can pay 70-something grand for one of them. They're really getting out of sight for an average person to buy. And the technology, of course, is way up there. It's a simple car. You can still get some fun out of it if you're not getting it as a daily driver. You would be insane if you got one of these as a daily driver. Even he admits that. But for the original Octopussy car, hey, this one's still in good shape. Notice he still has cocoa mats. Now, they're not the original ones. Of course, they don't make them anymore, but the company that makes them said, give us your pattern. He did, and so they made them new cocoa mats for the thing, just to keep it in tune with the 80s. And anyone has to admit, it's an old car, but it's still got a lot of style to it. It is still a sharp looking car. I mean, it looks like something out of a James Bond movie. It wasn't a James Bond movie. It's still got good lines. And I always go for a little bit of chrome myself. I don't like all this plastic crap. They couldn't make it all chrome because they had to meet all those new bumper regulations that they had in the United States. But it's got a little bit. And of course, it's got the wild Alfa Romeo emblem. We got crosses. We got snakes. There's stories behind it. For instance, the beginning of the name is Italian for anonymous. That's how they did businesses back in 1911. They called them anonymous. Well, I can imagine if I made a company that made Alfa Romeo, I'd probably remain anonymous too because the people who bought it might come to kill me because they break all the time. <laughs> it's a fun car for a toy. Don't go buy an $80,000 new one all loaded with a Ferrari engine unless you have money to burn. Taking your cigars with $100 bills and then throw them away. But well, this one, hey, he takes it out in the spring to go to Little Compton to look at the ocean. It's not an everyday driver, but you can see it held up pretty good. Heed my warning. If you're gonna buy one of these, check the frame out first. If it's rotten, run away, run away. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Jay Porter says, should I buy an OEM thermostat? I'm changing the coolant. My 2015 Camry with 121,000 miles. It's better to go OEM. Yes, it is. Because a lot of the aftermarket stuff is cheap junk that doesn't work. But here's the funny thing. Even the OEM stuff isn't as good as it is when you get them years later. I changed the thermostat. My wife's 07 Matrix, right? I took out the original one. Then I bought one at the Toyota dealer. That was original equipment Toyota. And I compared them. And the new one was so much cheaper than the one that was made in 2007. The one in 2007 had nice centered copper and rubber gaskets. The new one was all plastic. <laughs> the working parts weren't metal anymore. They were plastic. Cheaper made than they were from 2007 to 2022. And there are both OEM Toyota ones. So they are making stuff a lot cheaper than they used to. But at least the OEMs are generally better than a crap that's made in China that you don't know if it's going to work or you got a Camry, right? It's not that hard to change them. It takes five minutes. But I mean, if the thing breaks and your car overheats and ruins your engine, you're going to wish you went with the OEM one and not some cheap thing to save a few bucks on something that's as important as cooling your engine and heating it up in the winter. If it sticks open, then it won't get any heat in the winter. So yeah, go OEM. But like I said, <laughs> my wife, hey, I went OEM and it was a lot cheaper than the original OEM 14 years later. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.